we have a special address uh, from Mr. Chetan Kapoor, CEO of Tech Mahindra Foundation. With over two decades of experience in the development sector, Mr. Kapoor has been instrumental in developing thoughts and ideas to lead projects on the ground that achieve the best outcomes. At Tech Mahindra Foundation, he has played a pivotal role in achieving their vision of empowerment through education. He has conceptualized the foundation's flagship skill development program, SMART, which is one of the largest urban skill development programs in India. Today, he would be speaking on empowering youth through education to foster sustainable solutions. Welcome, Mr. Kapoor. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'd request you to please uh, give your address. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shweta. I hope uh, you can hear me. Yes, I can hear Okay, great. So thank you once again for uh, inviting me to this platform for the special address. I know that over the last two days, a uh, large number of speakers have come and expressed their views. So some of what I'm going to say might sound repetitive, but I'm sure the audience would excuse me if there's something which they've already heard before over the last couple of days. So uh, the topic that I've been asked to talk about, empowering youth through education to foster sustainable solutions. It's something which, of course, very closely re resonates with what we at Tech Mahindra Foundation do. As you're probably aware, the overarching theme of Tech Mahindra Foundation ever since we started in the year 2006 has been empowerment through education. And we have stuck to this three word theme through the 17 years of our existence. Within this, we have taken the liberty to expand the meaning of education to not just being education that is imparted to children in schools, but we've taken it to uh, include working with youth towards empowering them through skill development. For over a decade now, since 2012, we've been implementing the Skills for Market Training or the SMART program, which has till date helped more than 160,000 young adults across 11 major cities of India to not just get skilled, but also to get meaningful employment uh, through entry-level jobs. So we've stuck to this agenda of uh, working with youth and helping them uh, through, through all of these years. And what I would want to uh, share today with all of you are some insights, some nuggets into what has gone into making the SMART program. But I would like to start with a story which goes back to the year 2008, even before the SMART program got started. This was the time that I was beginning to look at working with youth as an agenda within the development sector. We were a part of a team which was looking at how our uh, youngsters who come from smaller towns and villages into our cities, um, how are they being skilled? And I remember being going to uh, such a center, which was close to the South Campus of Delhi University, where uh, youngsters who had come from uh, various states across North India uh, were being trained in English. And I observed the classroom where I realized that a number of youth who were there in this class were able to understand what was being spoken in the English language. But when it came to them speaking, I could see a lot of them faltering, stuttering, not able to express themselves. So after the class got over, I happened to meet with some of these youngsters outside the classroom and just have a little chat with them. And I asked them that, look, what I could see in the class is that most of you were able to understand the language. I'm assuming that most of you have a decent enough vocabulary to be able to express yourself. So what prevents you from speaking? Why is it that you are not able to speak up? And one of them said something which has stuck in my head and which was to me um, enlightenment in so many ways. He told me, sir, English me bolenge to pakde jayenge. If I'm going to speak in English, I'll get caught. I said, what do you mean? He said, sir, English me bol sakte hai, 
बट ये नहीं पता कि सही बोलेंगे कि नहीं सो वॉट आई रियलाइज वॉज दैट वॉट दिस यंगस्टर वॉज फेसिंग वॉज नॉट दैट ही डिड नॉट हैव द रिक्विजिट इंग्लिश स्किल्स वॉट ही वॉज लैकिंग वॉज कॉन्फिडेंस एंड दैट गॉट मी टू थिंक दैट वेन वी हैव टू एम्पावर यूथ वेन वी हैव टू वर्क विथ यंगस्टर्स वॉट डज इट रियली मीन टू एम्पावर in fact if you step back and think about the word itself there is a lot packed in the word empowering first of all it means that if i am making the claim that i can empower others it's obviously not a a a light claim that can be made it's not a claim to be made lightly because what it means is that i need to have the ability where i can help the other person feel empowered it requires the elements of empathy it requires a deep understanding and observation it it requires relentless and often thankless efforts and perseverance so all that is what it requires and when it comes to empowering youth more than skilling we realize that it means building self confidence starting with self awareness it means reinforcing positivity a lot of our youngsters unfortunately do not come with the kind of positive attitude which it which takes for them to succeed it requires instilling in them a sense of purpose making them more responsible and all of these is what we have worked towards in the skills for market training program of tech mahindra foundation we started small we knew that if we have to create a large impact we have to first dig deep we have to understand who our constituency is who is this youth that we are talking about is the youth in kolkata the same as the youth in bhubaneswar and bangalore and chandigarh and chennai and mumbai where we are working or are they different so it it meant that we understand the youth closely and therefore when we went into the idea of skill development we started with the supply rather than the demand which means that we looked at the youth closely we knew that the demand is there we knew that when it comes to the market which is an important part of the skills for market training program we knew that the demand is there we knew that if we are able to help youngsters get to the level where they can meaningfully work um, and and uh, contribute towards uh towards the productivity and profitability of their organization we knew that they they are going to be observed in the, uh, absorbed in the workplace however in order to take them from here to there we knew that there were several steps to be covered starting with asking the question who is the youth that i am trying to work with who's the youth that i am trying to empower and therefore we dug deep we spoke to many of these youngsters to understand what their aspirations are to understand what is it that really you know gets them ticking what are the fears that they harbor what are the kind of challenges that they see in front of themselves and we realized that while most of them had the understanding of what it takes to be successful and yet many of them knew that they would probably not be as successful as they aspired to be we went back to the drawing board and understood that what we need to give them is a sense of self confidence to get them that even if they are speaking incorrect english the fact is that they should be able to speak and that's what we got into the classrooms of smart that uh, we started in 2012 from just three centers back then we are now running over 80 centers and about to be uh, 12 smart academies so we run two kinds of uh, programs the smart centers in which we work through a network of ngo partners closely embedded in communities and through which we are able to train close to about 18000 youth every year and in addition we have been running uh, nine smart academies soon to be 12 in which we are doing intensive long duration programs for young adults leading to jobs in uh, in the healthcare digital technologies and logistic sectors 
And in all of these programs, if you go into our centers, if you come to our academies, you'll see that it's not just about skill development. It's about developing the youth as they are for, 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 for them to become confident young adults who can enter the world of work with a degree of confidence. And that's what we've tried to do all along. We've also understood that the youth that we are working with is not a static being. The youth that we are working with are continuously evolving. When we started working back in 2012, the kind of aspirations that the youth came to us were very different from what it is in the year 2023. We know that in these 11 years, uh, technology has really taken over our, over our lives in sometimes in ways that we would not want it, it to be. And yet we have to understand that also the kind of jobs which are out there, the kind of livelihood opportunities which are out there have also evolved significantly. So for any meaningful skill development program or any meaningful program which is meant to work with youngsters, it's important to understand that you have to understand them first and help them to get to where they really want to get. I'll share five insights that we've picked up while work, working with youth. First, never underestimate what they can achieve. I think as educators, as trainers, we often make the mistake of treating young adults like children. They are by no means children. In fact, even children sometimes surprise us by the kind of maturity that they can uh, exhibit in our classrooms. And youngsters, of course, uh, given the kind of uh, uh, backgrounds that they, they come from, given the fact that many of them come from backgrounds where, uh, where, where the education system has not really um, empowered them or given them the, the wings to fly, we know that they would come with a certain amount of lack of confidence, a certain amount of uh, uh, thought that they may not really be able to achieve. But despite that, it is very important that we as educators should never underestimate them and always give them the confidence and tell them that the future is there ahead of them. And if they reach out, they can achieve whatever that they want. Giving them this confidence continuously in the class through a series of positive strokes is something which is very important to work with you. Second, you must never generalize or assume. Okay, you have to, when you're starting to work with youth, you have to take the effort of first understanding who they are. You may be running a skill development center in which you are getting a fresh set of youngsters um, every few months. And you may assume that the batch that has come in today would be the same as the batch that came four months ago. But no, you'll be surprised to find that some of them may be quite different. And therefore, if you're running this program, you have to take the effort of understanding them, asking them questions, getting close to them to understand who they really are. And this leads me to the next insight, which is building a strong rapport with youth is everything. When we select our facilitators, when we select our trainers, what we look for in them first and foremost is that do they have the ability to strike a rapport with the youngsters? It's not easy, mind you. The youth of today is someone who, um, for someone like me at the age of 50, it's not very easy to fathom. I have to spend time with them. I have to speak to them, converse with them, get them to speak to me before I can get a sense of where they are coming from and what is it that they want. If I go to them with my um, fixed notions and assumptions, I would be making the mistake of never being able to breach the barrier that would be between me and them. And therefore, taking the effort to build the rapport is everything that there is to work with youth. Next is that you have to create an environment for them to flourish. Right? And this environment is created by bringing them together and allowing them to take center stage. You can't go in front of them and give a lecture. There's no way that that's going to work. 
you have to work with them in a way where they get the feeling that they are in charge of what's going on. That to me is true empowerment because you are not just keeping the spotlight on yourself. You are very willing to share it with them and ultimately let them bask in its glory. So these are some of the insights which I would want to leave you with because this is what we have stuck to in creating the SMART program. We know that even though the program is now more than 10 years old, we've just begun. There's a long road ahead because we know that the kind of aspirations that we ourselves at Tech Mahindra Foundation have for the youth of this country, we've only probably halfway there. We would want to reach a stage where every youngster in this country is able to reach a point where he or she has truly self-actualized himself or herself, where they have chosen a path which they are comfortable about, which they are confident about, and which they, when they grow up, can look back and say that, yes, this is what I have wanted to do. So that's the dream that we have for working with youth at Tech Mahindra Foundation. And I am immensely grateful to all my colleagues within the foundation, all my teammates, as well as all the partners who we are working with, who are helping us making this dream of empowerment through education come true. Thank you once again, CSR Universe, for giving me this chance. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kapoor. That was really insightful. And it's remarkable how instead of going uh, from a, a template-based training program, you actually make it student-centric. And I think that's the um, basically root uh, cause because of which it has been running so successfully. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, sir.